My name is Mirwa Sagaha, and I've been making kites for 23 years. I was making them in Pakistan for 14 years. But for the last eight years, I've been making them back in Kabul. The Taliban forbid kite flying because it was considered an extra expense and people shouldn't spend extra. In the past, there was cotton string and people would go to the fields in two groups. They would fly three kites and gamble on who would lose them first. In kite fighting, opponents would try to break each other's kite string. The one with the stronger string would win. When an opponent's string was cut two times, he would win the bet. I have been flying kites since I was a child. This is a part of our culture now. People are more interested in flying kites than before. I remember when I was a child, my father would buy me string on Fridays. Back then, we flew kites in another area. Today, we use King Nadir Khan Hill. I bring my kids here so that they can enjoy themselves and learn how to fly kites. When we are coming here on Fridays, sometimes we cut down 20 to 30 kites. It all depends on your fighting technique. Flying kites has a special one. During a kite fight, you should keep your kite high and hold the string in your hand tightly. This is the technique. Your string goes up and down, trying not to be cut by the others.
I make 200 kites a day if I'm just sitting here. I sometimes sell 2,000 to 4,000 kites in a day because I work as a wholesaler. There are other workers bringing me kites. It's a custom and a hobby here in Afghanistan. And the history of the kite goes back centuries.